We define ourselves by our actions. With each decision, we tell ourselves and the world who we are. Bill Walterson. Hello viewers, this is the next section, managing your puppet code with Git. In this section, we'll learn how to use Git version control system to manage your puppet manifests. We'll also see how to use Git to distribute the manifests to multiple nodes, along with fetching and applying changes automatically. Moving on to the first video, let's get started with Git. In this video, we're going to take a look at tracking changes and creating a Git repo. We begin with a gentle introduction. There might be times when you realize that you introduced a bug at some point in the past, and you need to examine exactly when a certain file was modified and exactly what the change was. A version control system lets you do that by keeping a complete history of the changes you've made to a set of files over time. When you're working on code with others, you also need a way to communicate with the rest of the team about your changes. A version control tool, such as Git, not only tracks everyone's changes, but lets you record a commit message explaining what you did and why. Here's an example illustrating some aspects of a good commit message. You have to summarize changes in around 50 characters or less and, if you use an issue tracker, put references to them at the bottom like this. This example is taken from Chris Beam's excellent blog post on how to write a git commit message at this link. A set of files under git version control is called a repository, which is usually equivalent to a project. A git repository, or just repo, is also a great way to distribute your code to others, whether privately or publicly, so that they can use it, modify it, contribute changes back to you, or develop it in different direction for their own requirements. You'll be able to use this repo for working through examples throughout the course, but you can also use it for help and inspiration when building Puppet manifests for your own infrastructure. The best way to get familiar with Git is to use it for real. So let's start a new Git repo we can use to experiment with. It's very easy to create a Git repo. First, install Git on VagrantBox using this command. Then make a directory to hold your versioned files. Now run these commands to turn the directory into a Git repo. You can change the files in your repo as much as you like, but Git will not know about the changes until you make what's called a commit. You can think of a commit as being like a snapshot of the repo at a particular moment, but it also stores information about what changed in the repo since the previous commit. Commits are stored forever, so you'll always be able to roll back the repo to the state it was in at a certain commit. It's time we make our first commit to the new repo. Because Git records not only changes to the code, but also who made them, it needs to know who you are. Set your identification details for Git using these commands. It's traditional for Git repos to have a readme file, which explains what's in the repo and how to use it. For the moment, let's just create this file with a placeholder message. Run this command. Oops, sorry. This would be readme in caps. Because we've added a new file to the repo, Changes to it won't be tracked by git unless we explicitly tell it to. We do this by adding the git add command. Git now knows about this file, and changes to it will be included in the next commit. We can check this by running git status again. See? The file is listed under changes to be committed. So we can now actually make the commit. You can always see the complete history of commits in a repo by using the git log command. Try it now to see the commit just made. At this point, you might be wondering how often should one commit? A common practice is to commit when the code is in a consistent working state and have the commit include a set of related changes made for some particular purpose. So, for example, if you're working to fix bug number 75 in your issue tracking system, you might make changes to quite a few separate files and then, once you're happy the work is complete, make a single commit with a message. Let's take a look at branching. Git has a powerful feature called branching, which lets you create a parallel copy of the code, which is called a branch, and make changes to it independently. At any time, you can choose to merge those changes back into the master branch. This is extremely useful when working with Puppet, 
because it means you can switch a single node to your branch while you're testing it and working on it. Similarly, two or more people can work independently on their own branches, exchanging individual commits with each other and with the master branch as they choose. This is a very flexible and useful way of working. For more information about Git branching, and indeed about Git in general, I recommend the excellent book Pro Git by Scott Chasen and Brent Straub. The whole book is available for free at this link. So, we've now learned how to use the Git version control system to manage Puppet manifests. Great!